So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, my name is Simon. Um, I'm the Huawei Store the maintainer, and my colleague Zhou Mimi is the Huawei Store developer and the maintainer. Um, we both work for Dark Cloud uh, on the storage product and the solutions. So today we will um, join together to share the topic of the accelerating the Kubernetes data-intensive applications with the cloud-native local storage. So here's our, our agenda. So first I will talk about the storage challenges of the cloud-native applications. Then why local storage? And what does the Huawei Store will bring to us? Then we will bring up for uh, the Huawei Store use cases for the workload, like the middleware, AI machine learning, uh, Kubernetes for virtualization, and edge computing. So actually, um, the initial drive, we developed this project about three or four years ago. It's just for the middleware, just provide the um, storage solution for the Kubernetes uh, state for set, the applications. Then we gradually to um, extend it to the other use cases. So uh, the challenges. So the following requirements are uh, critical to ensure the stable operation and efficient performance of the cloud-native data-intensive applications. So first is a, a high performance and a low latency. So this is typically uh, for the workload like the online transaction processing, the business like um, the banking service or security trading, which requires very uh, rapid uh, the, uh, the response time to ensure the best customer experiences. And also scalability and elasticity. So this is typically for like the internet the 2C uh, business uh, need to handle a large number of the, the concurrent user requests. So um, especially during uh, the uh, promotion or on sale, the data traffic may increase the, uh, uh, dramatically. So that will need the system. Also the storage uh, have a very quick the, uh, scalable. And also the high availability for the data consistency and the disaster recovery and the backup for uh, the, uh, in, in case of the site failure. And also the multi-tenant support for the resource and the user management. And also the last, but also not least, is automated storage management. This will increase the, uh, the productivity and reduce the management cost. So um, with uh, the local storage, uh, we'll uh, provide a list of the benefits here. So the first is the superior performance with the local disk I.O. So we all know the local uh, with the uh, local disk uh, will have the very low uh, latency and the low uh, network overhead. And uh, the, because we just mentioned a bunch of the, 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 the local disk, so it will be provided the extremely low cost compared to the commercial storage system. And also the high uh, flexibility with uh, the deployment on demand. And because it's a Kubernetes native, the storage system, so it will be uh, very well integrated with the cloud native applications. But however, um, there's uh, some um, the, the challenges for the uh, traditional the local storage. For example, the lack of the high availability for the data safe, uh, safety and the security, and also the management complexity. Uh, for example, if we uh, manage a large scale of the cluster with uh, hundreds of nodes, we have to uh, manage the very large of the, the, the disks. So that will be the very uh, the hard work. So let's bring up the the Huawei Store, that's our the, the storage uh, uh, project. So Huawei Store is currently the CNCF sandbox project. And the Huawei Store is a Kubernetes uh, native uh, storage solution by unifying managing the local disks into the local uh, resource pool. Then use the CSI to provide data volumes to the, the uploaded applications. So uh, let's look at this uh, architecture diagram here. Um, the green part is Huawei Store, and the blue part is a CSI. So we can see two um, uh, major components uh, in the Huawei Store, the local disk manager, LDM, and local storage. And uh, uh, the local disk manager, uh, LDM, is just to abstract the local storage, uh, local disks, into the Kubernetes resources. So it can be managed by the Kubernetes. So that's why we can offer the, a list of the features like the um, the, the, the disk auto, auto discovering, monitoring, and uh, um, uh, etc. And uh, and then we can use the local disk claim, this, which is also the Kubernetes resource, to claim the disk into the Huawei Store for the management 
Of course, you can also reserve your disk if you don't want to be taken over by the Huami store. And the local storage uh, will, pro will create the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the local uh, uh, disk pool uh, for, uh, for, for, for the upper the, the, the CSI. And uh, we can create a multiple in the, each node. Uh, for example, uh, depend, uh, uh, we, uh, we can use different uh, disk type, HDD, SSD, or NVMe for uh, creating the different resource pool. And because we use uh, the, the, the Linux kernel mode, uh, the uh, LVM technology, so it will take the very small footprint for the system resources. And uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a very good benefit for uh, in the later, we'll talk about the, in the middleware use case and uh, edge, edge computing. And the up layer is a uh, storage class. Uh, that's, uh, yes, it's, uh, the Kubernetes will, um, uh, the, uh, the storage class and the PVPVC. And um, then also uh, very uh, important, uh, the uh, component does not show in the picture, it's a Huawei store. Uh, scheduler. So just like the Kubernetes scheduler, and we can schedule the pod to drift with the data to ensure the data locality. And um, on the right-hand side, uh, we can see the LDM can also skip uh, the local storage to directly uh, provide the disk type, the data volume, to the up there uh, SDS, the software-defined storage, uh, like the Minio and the CIF and the AMFS. So they will create their, um, uh, their own uh, data volume to the to their applications. So this is for the case for if you require the, the extremely high performance and also the disk resource isolation. But the trade-off will be the lost some uh, uh, the flexible features like the scalability. So, and down the bottom is a screenshot uh, what the Huami store can provide the the two types of the uh, storage class, LVM type and the disk type, and also we have the three types uh, of the uh, for the LVM type, we have the, uh, the uh, uh, convertible, non-convertible, although it's, a, it's, a, it's HA and non-HA and convertible. So convertible means um, we can convert uh, from the non-HA to HA. This will provide an optional, uh, optional the, 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 the flexible to, to the future, the demand. Okay, after uh, the brief introduction about how the Huami store will work, so this page will be uh, easy to understand. So. Uh, the uh, local disk manager, LDM, will simplify the disk management. Uh, for example, they are auto discovering and identifying and uh, the monitoring, and uh, also that we can provide a centralized management interface and the disk overview. And uh, for example, we can get Kubo Control get LD, uh, local disk. We can get a list of all the disks managed by the, uh, the Huami store. And also, we uh, support the multi-type, uh, the, the disk type, HDD, SSD, and NVMe for the uh, different the, um, the performance requirements. And the local storage uh, will provide the two types of the data volume, the LVM and the raw disk, uh, we mentioned before. And also, another uh, very important, uh, uh, the, the Huami Store will provide the, the, the feature is, uh, uh, is uh, the better than the, the traditional one, is the high availability. So we can uh, cross-node replicas for the data uh, volume synchronization. So, and apart from that, the Huami store will also provide a, a list of the enterprise level data management and service features, like the volume snapshot, cloning, and online, online uh, migration. So that's a very, um, uh, very important features for the, the middleware use case and, the, and also the Kubernetes uh, uh, use case that we will talk about later. And also for the scalability, uh, the, um, we can also make the online expansion, the, uh, the data volume expansion, and the node expansion, and the disk, disk expansion all online without any interruption of the, the, uh, uh, of the production of the systems. So uh, next I will, uh, will move on to the use cases. So uh, Mimi will uh, to, uh, to talk about the the middleware and the AI machine learning, and I will focus on the full world and the edge computing. So, greetings. Thanks to Simon for his talk. Next, I'm going to present uh, two use case scenarios. The first uh, use case to be shown involves the integration of Huami Store with middleware applications. The primary types of middleware applications commonly classified into four major categories include relational and non-relational database. 
data processing and data analysis. For data pro for data based applications, uh, uh, such as um, such as MySQL and Mongo, they generally carry on many critical business operations within enterprises. Requirements for storage that are reliable, stable, and offer low latency. For data processing applications like Kafka and data analysis applications like Elasticsearch, aside from requiring low latency and high performance, the capability to ensure resource isolation in production environment is, is important. These, these applications may consume a lot of storage resources during both state traffic, which can, which can be harmful to other services running on the same node, potentially causing these services to become unavailable. Besides above features, certain essential common storage functionalities are also indispensable. These include snapshot, cloning, backup, recovery, and the data consistency measures, which are critical for ensuring data security. Additionally, for storage or system administrators, straightforward optional management tools are crucial for daily tasks, helping them in handling scenarios such as system upgrade, including incremental component updates, scaling storage capacity, and migrating data. It's particularly beneficial when these features are integrated into a visual interface or a command line tool. Okay, based on above mentioned requirements, here is the Huami solution for middleware. For those who require super storage performance like Minio or Kafka, Huami offers the capability to use direct raw disk volume. The most fat aspect of local storage is the high availability of data. In this solution, Huamistar also offers block-level high availability data volumes that help applications running on the other available node with zero data loss during a node failure. Moreover, Huamistar provides additional management features such as automatically data migration, cloning, failover, and the snapshots to better manage and utilize data. Finally, the most important thing, all these user op operation enhancing features are integrated into both command line tools and a user-friendly visual interface for convenience. Okay, the above is the Huami solution for middleware. Let's move on. The second use case, use case to be shared is the integration of Huami with AI machine learning. Here is the storage challenge for AI machine learning. Training performance is limited by the speed at which data is read from storage. The key to high performance lies in the ability to repeatedly and quickly read data from log storage. The closer the data catch is to the GPU, the faster the retrieval speed. Furthermore, a balance must be stuck between performance, capacity, and the cost. During model training, the demand for storage mainly occurs in the following two stages. The first one is multiple loading data sets during training. The second is frequent writing and loading of checkpoints. So the relationship between AI machine learning and the storage is that the faster storage makes the faster training. In this scenario, the demand for storage can be summarized as follows. The first one is high reread performance. Second is high write performance. The third is large capacity. In the corner right, in the bottom corner right is the description of storage by NVIDIA DJX Superport. It is seen that local storage has a natural advantage in AI scenarios. Okay, here is the overall architectural diagram of Huamisto in AI machine learning. And Huamisto mainly does the following things. The first one is simplify the management of data sets. Second is offer in-class storage and unified data sets loading and storage. The third is accelerated data loading and storage on nodes. Next, we will discuss three, these three aspects separately.
During model training, the first issue that arises is determining where to load the training, training datasets from. Generally, the source of datasets are quite diverse, including both public and private datasets. Some require authentication, while the others are accessible without it. If scientists or training programs within applications can focus their attention on the training process itself without consulting about the source of datasets, the training efficiency will be improved a lot. So, Huamisar Pro provides the functionality for users to customize the configuration of the data source. Once user completes the configuration, the data sets will be loaded into the training cluster from external source according to the user setup. After addressing the issue of data sourcing, the next challenge is speeding up loading data sets into GPU. Typically, the same data set is loaded repeatedly, which can happen across the same or different training tasks, potentially leading to computations for disk I.O. resource and resulting in reduced loading speeds. Huamisaw offers a data volume based on a shared memory for each data set which allows training tasks to read data directly from memory, thereby minimize disk access and speeding up multiple access to the same data set. Now that we have commenced the training tasks, we can joyfully train our models. However, in parallel training, some tasks may fail, leading to interruptions in the training process. To prevent the waste of previous gained training progress, it's essential to frequently save checkpoints. So Huamis offers, offers memory-based data volume for storing checkpoints. And, in, and to ensure these checkpoints can be accessed on other nodes within the cluster, Huamis will async them to the in-class shared storage system. Okay, here is the overall solution for air machining of Huamis Store. Up next, Simon will take over and continue bring us insights from other scenarios. Okay, thank you. So, Cooper uh, Bird, uh, for the virtualization. So, I will assume, assume here that everyone here um, uh, to know uh, what a Cooper Bird is. It's a, a very cool um, the, the, the open source so, so, uh, the software and to um, to running the virtual machine in the container manner uh, on the Kubernetes, and it's uh, connect and manage the Kubernetes uh, the, the container and the virtual machine on the same platform, and also it supports the internal uh, uh, accessing between the virtual machine application and the uh, uh, the, the container uh, the, the the applications. <laughs> so um, in a virtualization environment, the persistent storage is uh, very important. Also, the underlying uh, storage. Uh, need to uh, provide high performance block storage capabilities. And also there's some uh, important capability like the virtual machine snapshot, uh, snapshot restore, cloning, and uh, uh, online migration, etc. So, so what we saw, the, the data volume can provisioning uh, to the Kubernetes system. So the LVM type, which, which we talked about uh, the, the before, can, use, can be used by the cool words, the system volume and the data volume. And the disk type of storage uh, uh, classes can be also used for the cool words, the data volume. And also the, the, uh, uh, the volume snapshot storage class will be support the cool words, the VM uh, virtual machine snapshot and restore and cloning and uh, migration features. So uh, here is uh, the uh, exact practical the, the, the lab uh, what we um, mount the how to mount the data volumes on the Cooper Bird. So the first one is a, a LVM type, the data volume mounted to the Cooper Bird system volumes. So um, the because it's a system volume, so it, it will need the operating system. So we can use the CDI to import the system image uh, to the the Cooper uh, system volume. And the middle one is uh, the, uh, the LVM type for the whole data volume. And the right one is the disk type of story, uh, story class for the, 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 the cool word, the data volume. And the snapshot and restore. So before we um, can enable the, the, the feature of the virtual machine the snapshot, we have to make sure the, um, the, the storage class supports 
the CSI as a volume snapshot. So we need to uh, check the the the, um, uh, the 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 uh, the logic class, uh, the YAML file, to ensure the two parameters of the snapshot and the snapshot contents be configured because the, the snapshot the controller will keep monitoring these two parameters, and also the uh, snapshot and restore support must be enabled in the feature gate. And for the the VMware uh, uh, for the virtual machine restore, we have we also have to stop the uh, the virtual machine first to restore the new uh, uh, new virtual machine uh, from the, the snapshot. So this a uh, uh, cloning. Cloning is a much a straightforward, it's just a, a, a complete copy of the virtual machine. And uh, so the cloning API also really on the snapshot and the restored API. And we have to also make sure that when we store the storage class support the, the volume snapshot, and uh, like just we uh, talked before. And also the snapshot and restore support must be enabled in the future gateway. So the, um, here is the, the, the level we test of the snapshot. So for example, we create the, the first state of the file one, the file one state. Then we create a snapshot resource to capture the file one state. And then uh, we uh, to change the state to create by create the file two, and then we use um, uh, we create another restore uh, uh, restore the, uh, the, uh, the resource to to to, res to to work out the restore the virtual machine uh, instance from the snapshot that we created before. Then it was successful the uh, the clone and. Uh, So next uh, is edge uh, computing. Um, so with uh, the popularity and the instance of the IoT devices, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of the data generated by the edge device has increased uh, dramatically. This requires the edge computing uh, node to have the sufficient uh, storage capability to accommodate and process this data. So there are some special um, storage challenges on edge computing, for example, the real time Requirement. So the edge company will normally have the real time or near real time um, the, uh, for, for, for data processing and also the, the data synchronization and consistency to ensure the, uh, to avo avoid any um, the data conflict. And the third one is very important because, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the, at the edge side of the, uh, the edge computing, the system device, devices, um, the resources will, will be very limited. So it's not affordable to the, for the storage system to take uh, too much of the system resource. And also the uh, fault, uh, fault recovery and uh, the disaster recovery to, uh, to minimize uh, uh, the, the uh, operation and the maintenance, and also scalability and elasticity we have mentioned before. So uh, when we store the data volume can be deployed on both the cloud side and edge side. So at the cloud side, uh, the, uh, the when we store can be um, uh, pro uh, provide the data volume for the middleware or the Kubernetes, word, like we talked about before, and also for the uh, data analysis, analysis and also the uh, large model training. And at each side, uh, we can also for the, the middleware and the Kubernetes, word, and for the lightweight, the data processing. Okay. So what's the one store the benefit on edge computing? So because the local disk IO will ensure the real time availability and the processing the speed of the data, and because it's, uh, 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 I mentioned before, is we use uh, the uh, Linux kernel mode, uh, the LVM technology, it will be, take the very small footprint to saving the limited system resource. And the automated management to ensure the data reliability and business continuity. And also the data volume uh, actually the high availability, achieving the um, efficiency and the um, reliable data synchronization. So this is a, a of, uh, for the, the, the Cooper cost, uh, the, 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 the data to showing what the, the Huawei store will the occupy the resource. The, the resource uh, we uh, install the, the uh, local disk manager component and a local storage, and the, the, the system uh, resource will take very, very small. So, um, okay, so that, that's all the content that we talk about today, and also. Uh, this is uh, uh, our um, the, Git, um, uh, the, the GitHub repo, and we are, you are more than welcome to join us to uh, to make the Huawei Store is uh, one of the best solutions uh, for in the future with uh, 
very low cost, high performance, and many enterprise level uh, features. And also, please uh, scan your QR code for your feedback. And uh, yeah, and uh, we also have uh, the time for the Q&A. Any questions? And we can we'll try our best to answer. So if not, we can. Oh, okay. By the way, so our uh, boot is M11. So please come to talk with us if you have any uh, the, the, the question. Hello. Hi. Uh, I have a twofold question. Uh, first question is uh, when there are compute heavy workload and uh, storage heavy workload together on a cluster, uh, this local storage may not work, right? Because the pod has to locate with the storage or the storage is not accessible remotely, right? Like on a different node. Is that correct? Sorry, I'm not so, quite clear. So, so the you... cluster with a different kind of uh, uh, resources requirement, uh, some application require compute heavy, right? And some applications are storage heavy. So pod has to co-locate with the storage, with the uh, uh, with this uh, storage class. Is that correct? Or can the storage be accessed from a different node in the cluster, a pod running on a different node? Uh, to, uh, to be clear, is this your question about the uh, the different applications will require the different uh, the storage uh, resources like the and the, compute, yeah, compute. Yes, we uh, as I just mentioned, we have uh, uh, we can support the different type of the the the, the disk, uh, disk types like HDD, SSD, or NVMe for the different the application performance requirements. Okay, so but I'm the pod sure. has to be on that node where the storage is coming from. Sorry? The pod has to run on a node where the storage is allocated on, right? Uh, we, uh, well, the Juan Miso will have uh, the, uh, the scheduler, our own scheduler, to make sure the data, the, the pod will shift. So we, can, we have the HA, so synchronization. The data can be uh, if, uh, to the, the another no, so if the, any the node is failure, and the, 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 we can make sure the, the pod will shift to the, where the data are located. Oh, I see, got it. And uh, this node, uh, the, this uh, data which is replicated, is synchronously replicated or asynchronous? Uh, it's, uh, we can support both, the sync or async, but currently it's a sync. And we'll, uh, yeah, it's, we're also uh, on the developing on the, uh, the async. Oh, OK. So it's not LVM snapshot based? Uh, not snapshot. It's a, it's a total copy, it's not snapshot. OK, thank you. OK. Thank you for the question. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, maybe it's just me under misunderstanding. I'm just a bit curious in your earlier diagram on architecture, you were able to expose local storage as your own storage class with CSI directly into the Kubernetes cluster for pods, but you also had uh, instances where you exposed your disks to Ceph. Could you uh, elaborate a bit on when you would maybe want to use, when, when you would need to use Ceph instead of just using your local storage storage class? Uh, so you mean the, what's the storage class to work with the Ceph or, or the, the other the, uh, SAS? Um, I suppose the question is, um, you're able to use your storage class directly from a pod, right? You don't need Ceph to... Yeah, no, no Ceph. It's uh, our, the, our, the what we store, the data volume can directly exactly. uh, permission to the applications. And also we can... Uh, uh, you, we can provide the data this type to the SIF or the mean IO, so they can create their own data volume to their applications. So there's two ways we can, in the architecture, I think uh, we can explain before. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if, if, not, pressing, uh, if not answered, so we can talk the offline. So our booth is uh, M11. Yeah, so I might we try can talk to you. Talk more. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Hello. Hey, can you explain more details about how you replicate data from one node to another. For example, if we write a file in a machine, in a node, how you copy that data of that file to another node in a synchronous way? 
so where was the replication uh, the the tools uh, uh, like the 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 or 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 the IBD or something like that? So uh, it, it is a, uh, yeah. So it's a, any data or file uh, come out from the, the I/O and we can uh, synchronize to the another node. Uh, so, but yeah. It's a kernel. It's kernel mode. The DRBD, the, the kernel the way is the DRBD. DRBD is a very good tool for 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 the data uh, the synchronization. So which tool? DRDB, uh, DRBD is a yeah. It's also the, the open source. Yeah. It's a it's a third party tool. Yes. Third party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Third party. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Hello, can you explain how it is handled the encryption? There is an encryption layer or a proxy? Pro pro proxy? Yeah, how uh, the tools it is under, uh, and using uh, the encryption? If you, how, how do you perform encryption disk? Okay, we'll talk to you later. Uh, just a minute offline, so if you go. <laughs> okay. Is it okay? Okay, uh, so the, so let's go. Uh, if you have any more questions, yeah, come to our booth M11 again. So we have uh, um, prepared a few uh, funny game, and also we'll find any uh, more surprises. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>